Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. Today, we're going to talk about the C8 Corvette and some of its actual specs that have been leaked, showing some pretty crazy performance. All right, guys, so there is so much C8 Corvette information out there right now and so much left to learn still that whenever these specs actually leaked online, I was blown away at some of the numbers here. Now, as most of you probably already know, the C8 Corvette has some pretty crazy extreme zero to 60 times. But what we didn't know was some of the finer details like vehicle curb weight, 60 to zero braking time, and the zero to 60 time for the base non-Z51 car. Well, we know all that stuff now and more. So let's get right to the information here, guys. So the biggest one right off the bat that really blew my mind was the fact that the Z51 car obviously does zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. We already kind of knew that, but the non-Z51 does it in three seconds. So you're literally talking about 0 0.01 seconds difference, which is almost nothing. Initially, when the car first came out, there was a lot of people who were speculating that the car would hit anywhere near the 2.9 second 0 to 60 time without that Z51 package. So we have it in writing right from GM at this point. It doesn't really matter. I mean, there's 0 0.01 seconds difference. So I'm going to say it's not a huge change between the Z51 and the non-Z51 as far as the 0 to 60 time is concerned. Now, moving on to the next interesting piece of information here is the curb weight. The car is actually fairly heavy. It's almost 3,600 pounds, and that's about 300 pounds more than I was thinking it was going to be. Now, the biggest reason this matters is because, as of right now, the C7 ZR1 is a hair under 3,600 pounds itself, and that is still pushing into the too heavy category. But that's the top dog Corvette, so that's got everything you can possibly throw at it in that car. This one, however, does not. This is the base model, of course, Z51 car, but it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for growth. So in the future, when we get the Z06 or the ZR1, unless they're using incredibly expensive, incredibly lightweight parts, that number is only going to go up. That's concerning because in order to keep this thing as nimble as possible, we want that number to be lower, ideally. A lot of the McLarens and the Lamborghinis, they benefit from slightly more expensive parts to achieve a lighter overall weight. And this car looks like it's going to fall short of that. It is concerning, but I have a feeling GM will at least attempt to address that issue in the higher end models. Fingers crossed. Anyway, guys, moving on to the actual 60 to zero time. This is another place that I'm slightly concerned because this is significantly higher than the C7 Stingray was. So with the Z51 package, you're looking at 108 feet to stop from 60 to zero. For any of you who don't know, the C7 Corvette Stingray was able to do that in 90 feet. So literally a difference of about 18 feet. If I had to guess, this again comes down to the weight. So the C7 Stingray was lighter than the C8 Stingray, and because of that, it takes an additional 18 feet to stop. Now, as you guys know, the Z51 package adds bigger calipers and bigger rotors to help with the stopping distance, because if you look at the paper, the 60 to zero time for the base is actually 115 feet. It cuts off an additional seven feet with the bigger calipers and rotors, but still falls very, very short of the C7 Stingray. Like I said, this is very likely because of the extra weight that this car carries. Those are going to be my two big concerns on these numbers here. For the most part, the rest of it's actually pretty good information. The numbers are pretty impressive, but those two stand out to me as not the greatest. Anyway, moving on, we already knew the horsepower was going to be 490 for the base, 495 for the Z51. 465 for the base as far as torque goes and 470 for the Z51 package. That was really just the difference of the performance exhaust adds an extra five horsepower and an extra five foot pounds of torque. Displacement, we knew it was going to be 376. This is, of course, the same 6.2 liter engine we've seen in past C7 Corvettes, so nothing earth shattering there. Red line is pretty much where we would expect it to be with any kind of push rod engine. Again, nothing earth shattering. We've talked about in previous uploads about the top speed of the car being 193. That is, of course, the base model. The Z51 package actually knocks 10 miles an hour off of that, 
because of that rear spoiler and the aerodynamics. I'm surprised that isn't indicated in this as well with a slash showing base and Z51, but we already know the difference there, so no big deal. Now, the quarter mile times. These are fairly impressive for a base model C8 Corvette. The quarter mile is gonna be able to be finished in 11.3 seconds. That's pretty big, that's, a, that's an awesome number for a stock base car. This is most likely gonna be accomplished because of that dual clutch transmission, so kind of assumed the quarter mile time was gonna be pretty low. Now on to the quarter mile speed. It is gonna trap 121 miles per hour, which is, again is pretty good for a base model car. A lot of you out there are probably going, oh, these numbers aren't that great, but you gotta keep in mind, these are base numbers. So no, comparing this to the C7 ZR1, these aren't great numbers, but they are very good for a base model car that is only going to improve with future performance variations. So keep that in mind when looking at these numbers. None of the numbers you want to go up are gonna go down for the performance models and vice versa. So these are definitely good to know, definitely good to look at because this is a good foundation to build a car on if it's this great as a base. Another interesting statistic here is the actual lateral G's. So 0.9 for the base model car and solid 1G for the Z51. Now, as you guys know, the Z51s get stickier tires and a little bit more aerodynamics, which probably help with this. But either way, a solid 1G for, again, a base car, it's an awesome place to be, guys. So this is definitely shaping up to be something awesome. Next, we're gonna look at the wheelbase. So the wheelbase of the C8 Corvette is 107.2 inches. This is definitely interesting stuff because that's actually even further spaced than the C7 Corvette, which comes in at 106.7 inches. Now, this is likely because the overall car length of the C8 is longer than it was for the C7 as well. So if you look at both of them side by side, the C8 is actually a little bit longer than the C7. And this is interesting because if you see the C8 in person like I did at Carlisle, it does not appear that way. When you're looking at the car, it looks a lot shorter than the C7, but in fact, it is not. It is longer. So the C7 Corvette measures in at 176.9 inches, and the C8 comes in at 182.3. So it is almost a full six inches longer than the C7 Corvette is. Moving on to the width of the car, the C8 is a tiny bit wider than the C7 Corvette. The width of the C8 is 76.1, and the width of the C7 is 73.9. So the C8 is a hair over two inches wider and a hair under six inches longer than the C7 Corvette. Now going on to the next statistic, and it is height. So how high the car actually is off of the ground. And for the coupe, it is 48.6 inches tall. Now the C7 Corvette is exactly the same. So as far as height goes, the cars are exactly the same setup from the ground to the roof line. There is definitely an obvious emission here. There is no overall height for the convertible model though. This tells me that when this particular information was available for GM, they did not actually know what the height of the convertible was gonna be yet. So obviously that particular model is still in development. Now, last I heard, GM had specifically said we're gonna get this model come fall 2019. So that's only in a couple months. It's surprising that they wouldn't have had some of this information nailed down by now. The next piece of information that is relevant to some people out there is the actual usable luggage capacity or cargo space. So it is listed at 12.6 cubic feet and that is pretty fantastic for a mid-engine car. If we look at what was available for the C7 Corvette, it's actually noted as 15 cubic feet in the trunk. So overall, the C8 Corvette only loses about 2.4 cubic feet of actual cargo space. It's not bad. Most mid-engine cars give up a lot of cargo space for the mid-engine design and layout. GM was able to make a nice compromise and still get people the cargo space they wanted while giving us most of the performance we wanted. So one of the other bits of information here I thought was pretty interesting is the tire size. So the front tire is gonna be a 245-35-19, and the rear is gonna be 305-30-20, and that doesn't seem to take into effect any differences in the Z51 package. Now, if you remember with the C7 Corvette, the Z51 actually changed the size of the wheels as well. They were 19s in the rear and 18s in the front in the base model, 
and 20s in the rear and 19s in the front if you chose the Z51 package. It looks like you get the same size here regardless of what package you go with. Now this is great considering there are some of the people out there who want that all season tire on their Z51 package car, but that's not an option from Chevrolet. So you could actually buy them later, mount them on the same wheels and call it a day. Definitely interesting stuff here though, guys. It also says that the front wheel is gonna be an eight and a half inch wide wheel and the back one is gonna be an 11 inch wide wheel, which should actually leave a decent amount of aftermarket options if someone wanted to change the tire out completely. The last bit of information here that I was very interested in was the leg room and headroom of the C8 Corvette. I had a lot of people come up to me at Corvettes at Carlisle this year and tell me that after sitting in the C8 Corvette, they were surprised at the minimal amount of room in it. Now, GM actually came out at some point and said we were going to have a little bit more room in the cabin than we do with the C7, but these numbers are not agreeing with that. So the C8 is listed as having 42.8 inches of leg room and the C7 Corvette is listed at having 43.9. So a little over an inch additional of leg room available in the C7 Corvette over the C8. The headroom in the C8 Corvette is listed as 37.9 inches and the headroom in the C7 Corvette is listed at 38.5. So again, we're getting a little bit more headroom and a little bit more leg room in the C7 Corvette. The C8 seems to be shrinking it up a little bit, even though that is the opposite of what I have heard up until this point. This is interesting because now it starts to make a lot more sense as to why I heard so often at Corvettes at Carlisle that it felt more cramped in the C8 Corvette. This is why this kind of stuff is very important and very crucial to have in your hands before going and ordering the car. I don't know why Chevy hasn't released any of these specs officially on their site, and we have to rely on a leak to get them. Now, of course, with a leak, you want to take everything I'm saying here with a grain of salt because this is a leak and it's not officially from GM yet. All of this information could change at some point since it is not in stone yet. But as of right now, it seems pretty legit. All the numbers make a lot of sense and odds are very good. This is what we're getting. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for today's upload. So what did you think of these performance specs? A lot of the information looks really good and I'm very impressed with the car overall. But some of the things on this sheet left a little bit to be desired as far as I'm concerned. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I have a lot of footage coming from the Corvettes at Carlisle show and a lot of information about the C8 coming with it. So definitely stay tuned for that stuff. If you liked what you saw here today, give me a big thumbs up. If you have any questions about the C8 or anything we discuss on this channel, shoot them in the comments section down below or send me an email, horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. If you have not subscribed yet, please do. I have a massive amount of C8 and C7 content coming and you're not gonna wanna miss any of it. And as always guys, I'll catch you in the next one.